Hello everyone and welcome to our continuing reflections from the manse. This week we're looking at the famous priestly blessing or the Aaronic blessing which we find in Numbers chapter 6. Just let me read the words again. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And we were looking at the first verse, the Lord bless you and keep you yesterday. Now I just want to recap because I was looking at the word bless Barak and I was relating it to a berek, which means knee, and the, 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 the illustration of kneeling involved the humility of God. Now just in case there's any misunderstanding, imagine the king on the throne and there's steps leading up to the throne. And we come before the king and we kneel before him for a blessing. Imagine the king coming off the throne, walking down the steps, kneeling in front of us, putting his hand on our head and blessing us as a father would a child. That's the image. Just in case you were thinking of us standing and God kneeling before us to bless us. Um, I thought that might just be one of the the things you might be uneasy with, with what I said yesterday. But that's the, I want that illustration that I've just given of the king coming down and kneeling before us to bless us. Not before us, kneeling beside us would be better. Uh, so that's a recap on yesterday. But I want to concentrate on the second word in that first sentence. We looked at bless yesterday. Today it's keep. The Lord bless and keep you. So keep. Uh, here in the Hebrew is shamar and the basic idea behind that word is to exercise care, to exercise care over and it can mean protect, it can mean guard, it can mean to observe with concern. The word is used in the Garden of Eden story where Adam and Eve are given the garden to look after, to protect, to guard. It's also used for shepherds guarding and protecting the flock. I also think of the Cain and Abel story where Cain complains to, to God, am I my brother's keeper? It's that kind of word with that range of, of meaning. But primarily the context for us is the, the wilderness wanderings of the, the Hebrew people, the Israelites, uh, here in the desert of Sinai. And of course the background is to the, the theme and the metaphor of journey. We're all on a journey. The Christian people are on a journey, particularly just now through this pandemic. So in the desert, God promises to bless his people, to be with them, but to keep them. And the background here, of course, is the shepherd guarding and protecting the flocks. And that's interesting because the word shamar, to keep, there's a related word in Hebrew, shamir, which is thorn. Now, in ancient uh, times, I don't know about modern times, but certainly in, in ancient times, it was quite common for the shepherd, when the sheep were bedded down for the night, for them to make a, a corral for the sheep out of thorn bushes. Uh, and it's that kind of image here in the wilderness wanderings of the people with their, their sheep, but God is a shepherd leading them on the journey. But this guarding and this protecting is not absolute for the simple reason that life is a hard taskmaster. Life can be a demanding teacher and God has set it up that way. Now here with the people of Israel, God has got so much to teach them and he wants to school them. And in a sense, on this adventure of faith, they will learn so much. It won't all be laughter, there'll be tears as well. There'll be challenges, there'll be demands. He has saved them, he has chosen them, he has called them to be his people. But they've to become his people. In God's eyes, they already are, for he's chosen them. But now they've to live into that. That's what the idea of covenant is. God promises them that he will be their God, but they have to become his people. It's a process. And life is like that. Think of the illustration of parents and children. 
when we have a newborn baby, we're so protective and careful with it. And as the children grow and develop, we have to ease off a little as parents because they have to learn to walk. That means they take their tumbles, they get their bruises, they get their cuts, they get their, their difficult experiences, but it's learning. And the same too as they grow older into, into the teenage years, uh, it can be hard for parents because you have concern for them, but you're observing and giving a little bit of distance as they learn by their mistakes and as they become the, the people that we always hope and expect them to be. So too with God, his care is there for us, but that doesn't mean to say it's an absolute protection. There are experiences that we have to go through that are demanding and difficult. And just like the shepherd doesn't carry the sheep through the dark valley, he accompanies the sheep through the dark valley. There are no shortcuts as we saw when we looked at the 23rd Psalm. So too in the formation of God's people, there are the difficult challenges that they will face. And God doesn't uh, remove them from that. There is no magic carpet here to fly them straight from the wilderness to the promised land. No, there's all the wanderings to go through, the testings to go through, the trials to go through. So too for the church, so too for you and me as individuals. God has got so much to teach us on the journey of life and it's not always easy but we're never abandoned. He guards us, he keeps us. He blesses us as we saw yesterday and he keeps us as we see today. This is the God of the journey. He's with you and me every single day. In life and in death, he will accompany us and take us through. Thank you for listening and God be with you all.